All right. How many of you guys have had the thought in the past month or so that I'm ready for things to get back to normal? Brittany and I have had these conversations over and over. We just keep thinking about what it's like when things are going to get back to normal. Uh, Last week, I think it was on Thursday night, Brittany was like, can we just order food out? That way we can just throw the plates away when we're done. Like, I just want to feel like things are, are normal or getting closer to normal at least. And man, I've been thinking about that a lot about do we even want it to go back to normal? To the way that things were before. I mean, things seemed out of control before. Things seemed rushed all the time. Things seemed busy. I've taken my boat out to the lake more in in the past couple of weeks than I have in the past couple of years. And so, uh, do we really want it to get back to normal? And I was thinking about this, and I'm going to read you a passage out of the book of Exodus chapter 1. Because I think that we can learn a lot from the Jewish people who were enslaved to the Egyptians. Listen to this. This is what it says. But the sons of Israel were fruitful and increased greatly and multiplied and became exceedingly mighty so that the land was filled with them. That means that what might have been small, uh, I think at one point with Joseph it was about 70 people, has now turned into like a million plus people that are now in Egypt. Okay. So it says, now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, behold, the people of the sons of Israel are more and mightier than we. Okay. That means there's a lot of the Egyptian, uh, the Israelites that are here in Egypt. Now they're growing big, um, from, from a military standpoint, this isn't good. Okay. He says this, come, let us deal wisely with them lest they multiply, and in the event of war, they also join themselves to those who hate us and fight against us and depart from the land. So they appointed taskmakers over them to afflict them with the hard labor, and they built for Pharaoh storage cities. And but in verse 12, but the more that they afflicted them, the more that the Hebrews multiplied, and the more they spread out, so that they were in dread of the sons of Israel. Okay, this was the, the new. Pharaoh's idea. This is how we contain the Israelites. They keep multiplying. Let's just make their lives really, really hard on them. And and so the Egyptians compelled the sons of Israel to labor vigorously. And verse 14, and they made their lives bitter with hard labor in mortar and bricks and at all kinds of labor in the fields and all their labors, which they vigorously imposed on them. All right. So life doesn't sound like fun. If you're a slave living in Egypt, it may, they made their lives miserable. They didn't know what freedom was. They didn't, they, they didn't really know how to experience that. All they knew was hard labor that Pharaoh and the Egyptians inflicted on them. Okay, our lives have, I, I don't know, I would imagine most of y'all are probably like everybody else in this world, that you cram as much stuff as you can into a portion of time that is available to you. Okay. That's, that's how we are. That's how we, that's how we, you know, we ran our lives just going like crazy. And, and that's normal. Okay. We, we were, that was our normal going a hundred miles an hour. And, and the Egyptians, what happened was that was what was normal for them until like God saw how the Egyptians were treating them and God made a way for them to leave the slavery that the Egyptians had imparted on them. And so that that's they they were in Egypt in slavery. They leave Egypt in pursuit of the promised land, but because they couldn't follow what God had called for them to do, they were there for 40 years. And in that 40 years, over and over and over again, they continually said if we would have just stayed in Egypt, we would have food to eat, we'd have shelter, we'd have all these different things. We want to go back to Egypt. They wanted to go back to normal, not knowing that the promised land, how great it was going to be, that it lied right there ahead of them. And that's what I think about us when we keep thinking, I'm ready for things to get back to normal. Like, absolutely, I understand. I'm ready to go sit down inside of a Taco Bell. That way I can have all of the hot sauce packets that I can imagine. I'm ready for that to take place. I'm, a lot of you guys are ready for your kids to go back to school. I get it. Like people are ready to go back to work. And that's not the normal that I'm talking about. The normal that I'm talking about that we keep looking for is that busyness of our schedules. And what I wanted to encourage you to think about is that maybe the normal that you're ready to get to isn't 
what you're used to in the past, but maybe it's what's coming up in the future. Maybe you should be thinking about your future normal and how that God can use that future normal just for an amazing purpose. Like God's got a purpose for you. Use the future normal for God to bring that out in you and in your family's life. I just thought I would share that with you guys today. Um, Miss you guys. We'll see y'all soon.